Washington, thank you. Joining us now is tech policy and regulation expert Adam Kavakovich. Adam, thank you so much for your time. I just want to start, you know, based on what Joe was just reporting there, are you at all surprised to see so much emotion uh, that we're already seeing in this hearing? I'm not. The victim's stories are heartbreaking. And the fact is, um, you know, that online sexual abuse of children is a problem. It's an interesting, it's a challenging problem. It's an international problem. Over 90% of all sexual abuse imagery of children is actually uploaded outside the United States. West Africa is particularly a hub. It's an ongoing challenge for law enforcement. They need more resources. And, you know, and the victim's stories are heartbreaking for this to happen to families, to, 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 you know, to young people at really vulnerable times in their lives is just nothing short of heartbreaking. It, it truly is. And I, I want to point something out uh, that's pretty important. You know, these tech CEOs have appeared before Congress before. You know, what's different this time? What do you think comes out of this? Well, I think that regulation of technology is challenging because you're dealing with really difficult questions about speech regulation and re questions about whether the proposed solution um, would have unintended consequences. And I think that is often the case with many of the bills being introduced today. And frankly, that's a reason why bills haven't passed because um, they're, though they're always well-intentioned, they often have consequences that could make the problems worse. And so that is a reason why the bills don't pass. And so sometimes when Congress has proposes things and there's good reasons why the bills they pro proposed haven't passed, they can agree on having hearings um, and they can all agree that platforms should be doing more. And so that's the area of agreement. So sometimes I think Congress has hearings on these topics when, when there are good substantive reasons why they haven't reached um, legislative agreement. You know, and Adam, what more from your perspective needs to be done versus what is likely to be done? Well, I think the fact is that, that there's no denying that the companies, do, no company wants their platform to be a, a, a use at all really for any kind of child sexual abuse imagery. That That's some, not something that any of these innovators um, and entrepreneurs, you know, intended when they designed their platforms. And they all devote a lot of resources, really increasing resources over the year, years as the problem has gotten bigger. They all report their, uh, this child sexual abuse imagery to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, which is really a clearinghouse for law enforcement. They've all invested a lot to help this center detect patterns. So for example, if one piece of content is uploaded to one platform, they share that information with another platform. And that helps um, law enforcement take action and investigate those cases. And also helps the platforms detect that content automatically and hopefully remove it before no one sees it. But law enforcement is just drowning yeah. with these reports. And there's actually really good legislation that's been introduced by con in Congress by Senators Wyden and Padilla that would give more funding to law enforcement to help them investigate um, this kind of imagery and bring the perpetrators um, to justice. And that's a really a smart thing, that, a step that should be taken. Yeah, because lack of resources certainly plays into it as well. You know, Adam, why do you think CEOs have been slow to make, you know, some significant changes? Is it because, you know, we're we're talking about, you know, free speech as well? I don't think they have been slow to make changes. I actually think one of the things you're watching the hearing this morning is that I, I'm really struck by the scale and investment they've made. They've hired people. They've made, they've taken steps in their products. There's a, a number of products where you know, young teenagers cannot be messaged um, by by uh, unknown adults, for example, in Instagram. Now, that's a step that the company has taken recently. I really believe they actually are, and the companies are full of people who really want to do the right thing. They don't want their products to be used for abuse. Is there always a possibility to do more? Absolutely. And I think they'd be the first to acknowledge that, should they be doing more. And, you know, to the extent, I'm not hearing a lot of solutions from senators, to be candid. I think, I think you know, a lot of this is um, promoting particular pieces of legislation that they've favored. But there's good ideas for, for new things platforms can do. I think these CEOs are all ears, can Yeah. And the solutions are, are difficult to even come up with, you know, as you say. I do want to point out, you know, some individual states have passed laws restricting social media, you know, for teenagers, for young people. Do you think it makes a difference or a big enough difference? Because, you know, we're talking about individuals who have literally always had tech in their lives. They have grown up with this from infancy. You know, kids today are so extremely tech savvy. That's absolutely right. And I think that, you know, there's sometimes gets painted and sometimes these hearings a kind of a black and white picture. Look, child sexual abuse imagery is illegal everywhere in the country, full stop. 
it's it's you know it's it's blanket legal. But if you set that aside for a moment, uh, what you hear sometimes is just criticism of social media in general. And you heard that come up this morning. And even Mark Zuckerberg from from Meta said, "Look, you know there there has been no." Um, strong, or there has been no scientific evidence sort of linking social media to negative mental health for children. Are there are are there you know times when teenagers, particularly young teenagers, sort of deal with the the rough edges of adolescence through social media? Absolutely. But there was a Pew study last year that asked teenagers themselves for their opinions on this, and they reported that generally they had more positive experiences than negative on social on social media. Social media is a refuge for a lot of kids, right? If you're a, yeah. if you're in a school where you know, you may be bullied or maybe not not a lot of other people like you. Social media can be a refuge for a lot of those kids. And I think that is an underestimated aspect uh, of it for, for a lot of people. Yeah, you bring up a good point. You also mentioned uh, Mark Zuckerberg there. He he just addressed some of the, the families of the victims. We're going to try to get that sound uh, turned around as well. Um, Adam, thank you so much for your time. Certainly, you know, a topic that is complicated, uh, but, you know, we need to pay attention to. So we appreciate it.